All right, friends and neighbors, time now for another networking video. Yeah, for this one, we're going to shift gears a little bit, but I promise I'll bring it right back around to some good solid networking. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is latency, also known as delay. So latency is anything that's going to slow you down, and there are lots and lots of sources of latency or delay. Um, probably the biggest ones are what we call the packet handling sorts of delays. And we'll talk a little bit more about those um, here in a minute. But if you think about it, you've got to take data, put it inside a TCP or UDP packet, then you've got to put that inside IP, and then you've got to put it in a frame, and you've got to send it out. So there's lots and lots of sources of latency and delay. One of the things that's really, really important to us is one-way end-to-end delay. That is to say, how long does it take from the packets to get from the website you're looking at down to you? How long does it take for you to make your request up to that website? Both of those are examples of end-to-end -end delay. Now, if we use voice over IP for an example, because it's a very popular application and a critical application, when you process voice, all of that voice that's analog coming out of your mouth and the sounds that come out of the speakers, that's all analog signals. So that means it's got to be converted to digital for transmission. So the thing that does that is something called a codec. Today, the most popular codec is G.711 because it's one of the fastest codecs, but it's also very, very clear, very, very solid codec. There are some other ones, G.729, things like that, but G.711 is the top dog. Now, the thing that creates the voice frames is something called a DSP or digital signal processor. So sometimes you hear that term used. When you put all of those things together, you get the codec in there working, you get the voice frame, and then you got to queue it up and get it ready to send. All of that is called handling delay. And you can see that depending on the type of system you have, we're talking about 25 to 60 milliseconds just for handling delay. That's before it ever gets transmitted. Now, latency is the chief cause of poor perceived call quality or poor application performance. So it's the number one thing that we like to worry about. So the obvious goal is to minimize latency. For voice, we have a very particular number. It's 150 milliseconds of one-way delay. Anything beyond that, it starts to have be really, really tough to have a conversation. You can see examples of this in satellite transmission when it's very awkward to see the person on the other side of the ocean talking and then you have to wait a second for them to to respond and so it's um, it's a very very important metric that we have so latency creates all kinds of problems for the applications it gives us very very slow response time evidence suggests that humans are not willing to wait very long for things to load think about how long you're willing to wait when you are waiting for a website to load how long does it take you to navigate off of that how, what about traffic that's another example that i like to use how patient are you in traffic? Well, we're not. When we're delayed, we're very, very upset. So other effects of latency include transmissions being resent, or what we call retransmissions. That's a real, real application killer right there. And then, of course, in voice over IP, we have ends interrupting each other. And then in voice, we also have something called echo. So for the win, we want solid codecs like G.711 that perform well under all network conditions. And then of course for our applications, we want fast network links and we want to keep congestion to a minimum. Now let's get a little more specific about sources of latency. The big ones are framing and packetization, that whole thing trying to build a packet. So that encapsulation process that I talked about and we did the example of a voice codec. But then once the packet starts to traverse the network, of course, we have all kinds of things that create latency or delay as well. When you get to a switch, what does the switch have to do? It's got to process its source address table, and then, of course, we've got all the error checking. Get to a router, we've got to process all the way up to layer 3 now, and then, of course, if there's anything else going on on the router, we've got network address translation, uh, access control lists, firewalling, all of those things tend to slow things way, way down. Transcoding is a voice problem where you've got one codec to start and then you have another one at the end. And then, of course, packet loss. We'll talk more about that here in a, uh, a bit. Packet loss is another real problem. Now, there are other sources, but they're either controllable or a little more controllable or they're not as big 
a concern. So jitter buffering. Well, if you've got an eight second buffer, there's your delay. Now we don't usually worry about jitter buffering when we've got real time communication going back and forth because we don't do it as much. But buffering is certainly a problem. Serialization of the data. This refers to getting the data actually on the wire. So think access methods and things like that. A little bit of delay there. Uh, software processing. If there's anything that goes on that requires you to look at this packet for some other reason, one example is when we do uh, network address translation, we actually rewrite headers. Now, that's one example, but if you have software processing of, say, encryption or something like that, that's another example. Now, propagation is listed as a source of latency, but come on, we're really talking about two-thirds of the speed of light, so is it really that much of delay? So that's one of the reasons this is in the category of small latency sources. And then, of course, another source is other traffic. And depending on the amount, it can be either a lot of delay or, or not very much at all. Now, the goal for packet loss is less than 1%. And here's why. Packet loss, you lose a packet, it doesn't seem like a big deal. And in real-time streams, like gaming or video or voice, we don't really worry about it. In fact, we don't want to worry about it. But TCP is a whole different animal. If we go right to the original RFC on TCP, and we read what it has to say there. It says TCP transmits a chunk of data. And as long as you get an acknowledgement, life is good. But if the acknowledgement is not received and the transmission timer for that segment expires, then the packet has to be retransmitted. And what's worse, it could be that a whole bunch have to get retransmitted from the time of the lost packet. So that means that what happens is you go back and have to retransmit all of those all of those packets, and so we're waiting for that uh, data to get through because, of course, TCP is keeping track of sequence numbers and acknowledgement numbers. Now, it's a little bit better than that because updated systems, updated applications, what they do is, at a minimum, do things like selective retransmissions. We don't want to retransmit everything, but we retransmit only the parts that were lost. So it's not quite as bad as all of that. Now we'll talk a little bit more about sliding window later on, how that works, but TCP has a real problem or can have a real problem with packet loss. Okay, jitter. Jitter is the last one on our big three hit list. Jitter is variation in arrival time. So a packet is expected to arrive and then it arrives at some actual other time and the delta there is what we call jitter. Now, jitter is a problem because you don't get smooth application performance. That, that's what we're trying to do. And in fact, when you have things like load balancing in the system, load balancing is generally good because we want to evenly distribute the load across links or across pathways. But packets can be uh, forced to arrive out of order or they can be delayed in the queues as you're trying to even up the load balancing. So we usually handle jitter with buffering, and we see that all the time in YouTube. So jitter is something that we can compensate for, although in real-time apps we don't do it as much uh, because that would actually slow down the connection all by itself. Now the handling of jitter can be adaptive or non-adaptive. So depending on your approach, you can expand or collapse, say, the amount of buffering that you're doing to address the problems with jitter. Well, that'll about do it. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, this has been a quick discussion on latency, packet loss, and jitter. Hey, like and subscribe to the video if I helped. I'll see you next time. And until then, may your packets always reach their destinations.